The views and opinions expressed by the guests, callers, and hosts on this and all Rents Radio Network programs do not necessarily reflect or agree with those of the network, its commercial sponsors, its radio station affiliates, or Internet broadcast platforms. In these controversial times, we believe the First Amendment and freedom of the press are absolutely essential to the survival of our nation. Thank you. And now, enjoy the program. Okay, and here we are back again. It's Thursday. Glad you're along tonight. Glad I'm along tonight. And Dr. Richard Allen Miller joins us this first hour tonight. Rick has a remarkably interesting, erudite, and wide-ranging intellect. Always fun to talk to about many different things. And he is uh, living in Southern Oregon here. Are you there, Rick? Yes, I am. Hi, Jeff. Hi. How are you feeling, by the way? How are you feeling, really? I'm not a complainer. I don't feel good. No, but Jesus, I mean, good gosh, I saw a picture of that. Good gosh, you're lucky to be alive. I am, and uh, I think we should kind of just leave it at that. It wasn't my time yet. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very grateful, and uh, but I don't feel good at all. And I can, I can just be honest, I guess, if someone asks, and thank you for asking. But it'll get better in time. Just well, I've got some homegrown just for you if you want to. No, what a, gen- <laughs> a gentleman. That's yeah. kidding. I'm so very sorry what happened. It's kind of creepy. It's very creepy because I don't know All what happened. Can, and you may never know. It's like one of those false flags where there's layers and who knows what really actually happened. I concur. Okay, now, when I look around the world and, and look back in your lifetime, have you ever seen, or did you ever think you'd see, anything more deplorable, more really ugly and disgusting than the non-morality, the inhuman non-morality of the so-called people who are running the show? These people are evil. They're not, they're not human. They don't belong here. We've lost what we had as people, as a species. We're no longer the sentient species of the planet, in my view. We don't belong here in that case because we don't have the stewardship anymore. We can't even take care of ourselves. And the younger people, God bless them, are just dumber than dirt, by design, don't have much of a chance. And you young people who are listening here because you do care and you do get it and you still have an intellect, bless you all because you're all we have. Uh, It's just that bad. And we're sitting on the edge of... uh, Thermonuclear war, obviously. Will it happen? I don't know. Let's hope not. But I would suggest this, Rick, and I'm going to turn it over to you here. I suggest that we already have had a thermonuclear war four four and a half years ago at Fukushima, which has destroyed virtually all viable life, competent life, in the Pacific Ocean. And it's only going to get worse and worse and worse Uh, Hundreds of billions of sea animals have been killed. Now the sea star thing, which no scientist has the guts to say anything 
about Fukushima in regards to is moving further north. Uh, I can't even begin to to project the amount of death and destruction. And people don't want to hear it. I've talked to people in the last month. They, they don't even know what Fukushima is. I said, remember the nuclear reactors that blew up? Oh, yeah. All right. They fixed all that. That's right. They got it fixed. And then I say, do you eat fish? Yeah, I, I still eat fish. And that's where we are. How many press conferences has the EPA held to honestly discuss Fukushima? None. Nor are there going to be until I think people start dropping over in the streets. Perhaps they will then. For disclosure and saving face and not actually allowing the media to know what's really happening is the root cause of what's really going on. You know, when, when Fukushima occurred, there were other meltdown situations in Japan. Yeah. There are all the other nuclear power plants that they have in other parts of the island also went through forms of failure. And right now, if you look at the NC, uh, the Nuclear Emergency Tracking Center, the E, uh, the NECT, uh, TC, dot com, it will show Japan lit up like a candle uh, with RADCON 3, RADCON 4 level alerts. So the children of Tokyo went from, oh, what was it, in 20, uh, 2011, when it first occurred, there was like uh, a 22% effect of children that had thyroid anomalies within the first three months. Today, That's right. that figure is up to 48%. That means that everybody on that island has been nuked. And that uh, it, you know, above normal levels. How much levels? You know, when I wore a dosimetry badge in high energy physics, I would put a dosimetry badge when the background radiation was possibly up to 1,000 times normal exposure. Huh. Now, today in the United States, we are 10 times what we were before Fukushima. Now, is that dangerous? Probably not to us, you and I. But for children, it's devastating. And um, I don't think people realize the kinds of exposure one gets just flying in an airplane up in higher altitudes. And with now this new radiation cloud, like the Van Allen belt, now forming with cesium-137 and plutonium, we now have almost no way to be able to go into space without some form of damage to the astronaut, literal. And um, it's gotten so bad that some of the particulate hangs up there. It's not how it have not fallen to the earth. Right. But when it does, we have these bizarre situations that occur in New Mexico, Florida, you know, uh, Michigan, whatever. And and the, the situation has gotten so bad that their system of cleanup using robots their second robot failed. That means they do not yet have a solution on how to fix the problem, which is continually leaking into the ocean right now. Right. And it gets worse because if you realize that we are about to go through a near extinction event, and when I say that, uh, the salinization of the ocean is, increased, is decreasing so rapidly, we will have a mini ice age that will occur. It occurs every 3,600 years or so. Um, we're on schedule, and right now, Antarctica is at 64 degrees, and the Greenland at the other end yeah. is melting. That polar cap is just, that iceberg is melting unbelievably to the point where they, you haven't seen it in the media, but the ocean uh, levels are actually rising. And when they reach a certain critical stage and we're really close to that we will have a day after tomorrow and the concern i have is that the fact is that when this ice age occurs it will put everything in stasis but the new civilization that crawls out of caves in survival mm -hmm. won't have a chance 400 Chernobyl, and it's just crazy it's crazy 
I'm uh, speaking now as a physicist, and yeah. I'm very concerned because we are about to go from Atlantis to Greece. We are about to have a change in civilization. Interesting and, comment. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's nobody's talking about it. No. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Well, you know, thank you. and and with Fukushima, if we don't turn those switches off now, there will be nothing to inherit. There's the no, next Rick, civilization the, the, the that will tech, fall out of caves, like Clovis. The technology to fix Fukushima does not exist. That is correct. It does not exist, and they don't know at this moment what to do. Okay. Colorado State University, in partners with Fukushima University, odd, uh, are actually studying sea life in the Pacific Ocean now. They're finding bodies of fish and other forms of wild animals, and they are animals, riddled with tumors, eyes bleeding, covered with lesions, uh, they're missing reproductive organs, eyeballs, the skin is disintegrating, peeling off, turning yellow, Mammals are being affected by diseases never seen in the species before, ever. This now, is all you, part of Fukushima's legacy. That's right. And if you folks are eating anything out of the Pacific Ocean, uh, good luck. Uh, you shouldn't. Uh, anybody with a brain won't. But you don't know. So we're here. I'm here. Uh, Rick's helping to tell you. And where are all of the other PhDs in this country? I don't see them talking. They're scared of their own shadows. They're afraid of losing their grants, their monies, their egos. It's beyond description. It, it just there's, is. there's other problems ongoing, of course. This geoengineering has got to be a close second to Fukushima. I, 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 and well, then there's I, I don't GMOs, know. And the yeah, list yeah. goes on and on. Yeah. And the problem is that nobody is doing anything about it. The geoengineering that we normally uh, enjoy, we didn't have it today, there's a little bit of it up there today, but mostly it was that w real wet, real clouds, is all coming out of Chilliwack, Canada. It's not even the U.S. that's doing it. And why are they doing it? The best guess I can, I can muster with my pay grade is basically to stave off an event that should have occurred earlier. And Fukushima is a warning to turn off the switches before this event occurs, because when this event occurs, there will be no grid. And I mean literally. And then it'll call, it'll put everything in stasis, and when we crawl out of the bunkers, caves, the bug ends, whatever, there will be nothing left to return to. Well, That's you, what you, our legacy is. You paint a, an accurate picture that will never be spoken about on the mainstream media uh, for obvious reasons. They don't want people to know. We are, and again, the key word, as I've said over and over again, which you never hear, see, or uh, even mentioned, is bioaccumulation. You don't hear about it. And it's washing up in the ocean water. It's coming across in the marine layer. It's coming across in rainstorms. And I still think that there is a reasonable chance to assume that the California drought, i.e. the block wall that has been uh, assembled and placed off the West Coast for the last two winters, which has caused the drought, was done so to keep these radioactive storms from dumping the entire West Coast, the Rocky Mountains, the Midwest, with radiation. They've broken these storms up, kicked them north, kicked them south, little pieces. Most of it went back into the ocean as rain when it hit the high pressure. Uh, but it's sitting there right off the coast, and it is being replenished 26 hours a day, and it's not going to stop for, as they have said in their candor, a couple of hundred centuries at least. Okay. The problem is that the ocean levels, the actual sea levels, are rising because of the melting snow, uh, snow caps. And Antarctica is, like, warmer than Grant's Pass. And right now, in Grants Pass, where I live now, my well is going dry. So, here we are, at the edge of nowhere, and about to change a culture, a society, a group of, you know, survivors, 
I figure the frost lines in Grants Pass are going to reach 10 feet. Wow. And with that, the seas are estimated right now to rise 60 meters, just like in the movie, the day after tomorrow. And the problem is, uh, this is a recurring situation that has been written on cave walls, and there's the sun burping, and here's the ice age, and here we are coming out of the cave to form American Indians. That's the Clovis culture. And right. they drew pictures of what happened 36 years, 100 years ago. We are about to go through another one of these things. And the problem is the cooling systems for these 400 different nuclear power plants all require electricity that when that grid, and it will go down. We had a double X band, the uh, CME, yesterday. It is messing up communications, including Skype, possibly our telephone. And here we are with no solution on turning that switch off. If, if we don't do that, even with a change, the next civilization isn't going to be have a chance. No, the end won't. of man. Yeah, it won't. Uh, if you've seen the stories at the top of uh, Rents about Fukushima, I also include their occasionally Chernobyl stories and the whip story in New Mexico. And that was a, a, a stunner. Three Mile Island was worse than the media was reported. Right. That's why personal friends of mine moved from South Carolina, literally. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was that bad. Nobody is being told the truth. Everything is a false flag and a distraction. It's not real. What's real is that the background radiation now for Grants Pass, Oregon, where we live, is up 10 times what it was prior to Fukushima. Now, is that dangerous? <clears throat> I don't know. What I do know is you can get 100 times, would be flying three jet lines from China to America. That's the exposure you would get 100 times. It's real serious. At 1,000 times, I put a dosimetry badge on. So is 10 times important? Probably not, but... It's going to affect our children, absolutely, absolutely. Children are defenseless with their undeveloped thyroid. There is nothing we can do to protect them. Not really, not that I can think of. You can do small things, but you have to use common sense, and that's something that's in very short and diminishing supply as well. By the way, at that WIP facility in New Mexico, the experimental underground nuclear storage facility they ended up with 5,000 times more plutonium released than they admitted <laughs> funniest thing they just they lie all the time they have no problem with it it's all plausibly deniable because cancer takes time and they can't say well six months later you got cancer from from whip or fukushima they're just not going to talk about that. Billions and billions of Dead Sea animals washing up on the West Coast. It's worse than that. <clears throat> they were, yesterday, they had pictures of sea lions in the streets because the oceans are warming up. This is the global warming problem that we had. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. this is not, to my knowledge, strictly based on man. The sun is heating up, and there's global warming on Mars and Pluto. And this is because there seems to be some <clears throat> object out past Neptune on elliptic, off elliptic, that is entering our, our solar system and causing, you know, planet 7X, that is causing perturbations in the orbits and the sun to actually heat up and throw off more coronal mass destructions. Now, with that will come grid collapse. You can count on it. That's my hand. If you're not prepared for that, that alone is going to cause you grief just for access to water. Oh, no question. Uh, how, how are people going to deal with groundwater and whatever snowpack there may or may not be in the future that is patently radioactive and grow things in gardens to eat? They can't. They don't understand. You've got to cover your greenhouse, get a well somehow, and use well water. That's really your only chance. Uh, it's very sad. 
uh, factory farming, using contaminated water. Uh, God only knows what else they put in these foods now, so-called foods. But it's uh, it's bad. Now we don't want to scare you all away, but we want to wake you up. <laughs> It's the truth. All you got to do is do the reading. Don't believe uh, Rick or I. Just read. Just read the stuff that I put up there, and you will understand. It's not a mystery. It's the truth. Hold on, and we'll be right back. Okay, with Dr. Richard Allen Miller, Ph.D., all of us tonight, this first hour, and talking just a little bit about Fukushima. We missed our Monday program. We'll have Yochi Shimatsu next Monday. We'll try and get up to date with him from over in Asia. Tritium leaks from U.S. nuclear plants said to be escalating. No big surprise. Our nuclear plants are disintegrating. They're falling apart. They're rotting. It's like running ethanol gasoline in an automobile engine or any other gas engine. It just wears them, wait, just wastes them, tears them down. Uh, so if, if you have a chance to find a gas station in your area that has ethanol-free gas, even though it's more expensive, use it, please. It will help save your life, save your engine, and give you a lot better performance for your buck. And that's not a commercial. That's just the truth. Ethanol gas is a joke. Uh, Okay, Rick, what do you want to talk about next? Well, I don't care. I've got a listener from Australia listening to you right now, and he just told me that you can't turn a nuclear power plant off. Yes, sir. That's and right. it's basically game over. <laughs> and that there won't be any human life by 2050. And NASA actually says that in their documents and based it on the transhuman movement uh, you know, based on the Avatar program, which we now have, an Avatar 1. Mm -hmm. So, how does that play? I don't get it. Mars, I guess that's... <laughs> and right now, right after the Ice Age, this object that is coming in isn't going to hit the Earth, but it's got a debris field and left the asteroid belt, and Mars it pretty good. Uh -huh. One of the times few that it came through before. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got to tell you, there are things going on that my pay grade doesn't give me access to. Mm -hmm. But I can certainly connect dots like you do. And uh, I think it's time to man sustainable lifeboats. That's what I think. And I've actually started doing some projects right here locally. There's uh, out near Weimar... There is, on uh, Ev East Evans Creek Road, there is a 258-foot greenhouse aquaculture system that has a throughput of 50,000 heads of lettuce every day, 24-7. You can actually watch the plants grow. It, it is that efficient. It goes from a start to a final product of a head of lettuce in seven days. I saw it. Wow. Saw it. Wow. Now... And, and up at Lost Creek, up where, up at the Lost Creek fish sure. hatchery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in full production today. Huh. They have three-year-old salmon ready to release. Holy water is fly fishing at its very finest right now. And my calculations, this is all military stuff I'm doing now, shows that that facility is enough to feed the state of Oregon with protein. What? The fish hatchery at Lost Creek? Right now, in full production, would work enough to produce enough fish to feed the state of Oregon. Well, now these, okay, so it's like a, a big uh, fish farm. So you're talking there about. you go. Now we're back in division by George. I think he's got it. Yeah, aquaculture. Rain and rain. Okay, yes. so why That's take. That's what I'm doing right 
right now yeah. is I'm taking physical inventory yeah. of the resources around us, and we have a way to do it. Why release all of those fingerlings down the Rogue River only to have them die from eating highly contaminated smaller fish, algae, plankton, other food forms. Yeah, red algae. Time. That's all of that bacterial stuff that's going on. Yes. And you forgot the Columbia River. Let's not forget Oh, my God. For that's been radioactive for years, but now it's I way know, worse. but they're leaking right now. Seriously. Yeah. And so a lot of the stuff that you're seeing right now in the Pacific Ocean is not from Fukushima. Guess what? It's, it's coming from, from the Columbia, huh? Yeah. Hanford, yeah. It's well, getting <laughs> creepier by the day. And the more dots I've been allowed to connect, lead me down yeah, yeah. a warren of rabbit holes. I'm not surprised, and if you folks look at a map who don't live anywhere near the Northwest and understand that the Columbia comes right down, washes out the entire gorge, but at the headwaters is the Hanford nuclear catastrophe. There it is, right there. <laughs> and it's leaking. And it's absolutely been in the news. They found 60 barrels that had been leaking in the Columbia, but all of that is messed up now. Wait, they found barrels in the river? Yeah, not in the river, no. They're leaking into the groundwater that's going into okay. the yeah, Columbia yeah, River, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, well, they knew this was coming. Now, if you watch the Columbia as it, it outputs in the Pacific, it starts to move down the West Coast to join the Fukushima radioactive water that has been brought across the North Pacific on the North Pacific Current. And that's a deadly combination. So that's an, an addition we didn't need. Um, these, it these, gets better, though. That's yeah. the problem is that all of the Daiichi-like GE plants in the United States, and there's 17 of them on just on the Madrid line. Yeah, there's They're 27. All leaking now. And you yeah. can see it with the Nuclear Emergency Tracking Center. They'll show you when it goes to RADCON 2, RADCON 3 level alerts. There's even been several RADCON 4 and one RADCON 5 level alert this last month. Well, it's funny we didn't hear about that, isn't it? Now, imagine that. You can find it in Energy Echo News, that energy news that they do that does all the, you know, mm -hmm. reporting on Fukushima. I have to tell you that having a mafia do the cleanup is creepy because well, they, they did no they did the build up and the cleanup for life it's all no. about money and business and they don't know what they're doing and they don't have a protocol in what to do now it's and just business right had two of their robots <laughs> fail uh, the most recent robot was more of a mechanical robot rather than a high tech robot and it didn't last for 20 minutes no. And they decided not to pull it out because had they pulled it out, they would have been pulling out something that was emitting 10 Seabrits an hour. Yeah, so I know. They left it it's in there. It's creepy. Uh, people don't realize how bad the situation really is. And with the news blank out at, in, in Japan now, it's against the law. If you report anything about Fukushima, you go to jail. Well, that's why no one's reporting anything about there it. There you go. That's how it works. All right. I don't... Uh, have again a broad brush approach to this, but I would suggest there is no broad brush. No, uh, there's not. Approach. And All your we can do from Australia mm -hmm. says the game is over. He may well be right, uh, unless there's some m miraculous off-planet intervention that comes in here to <laughs> transmute <laughs> these uh, elements the into innocuous. In box. Yeah, Get that's the truth. Yeah. The gifts from the gods? I don't think so. Well, I don't think so either. Hold on, Rick. <laughs> we got to take a break. We'll come right back. Dr. Richard Allen Miller, Ph.D., and yours truly.
Okay, back to Rick. Rick, what, what do we do? Uh, and those of you listening who know and understand, this is kind of a dilemma. After a while, you get tired of banging your head against the wall to try to talk to people rationally and pragmatically about this, to try to help them understand, because they just come back ultimately, in many cases, with, ah, I don't want to hear about it, or, ah, the government would tell us if there's anything really wrong, ah, you're alarmist, ah, whatever. And these, some of these are intelligent people. They just don't know. So what do we do? What is our, our moral responsibility? What is our accountability to try to help well, people? Well, I like the way Andy Warhol puts it. Okay. Where are my virgins when I need them most? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I think we have an opportunity for evolution. And obviously, in terms of siddhas and higher states of consciousness, where time becomes timeless, this nonsense of apocalypse then becomes archetypal and basic as part of the length, girth, and width of men, and is part of why we at our very wit's end evolve to the next level. I think that there's something more than death ahead. I have studied with Google Ross. I have actually spent time in seminars and walking privately with even Alexander, and it's my contention that death, that lie death is actually a form of waking up, and that this part is a dream, and we have, to some extent... You mean a nightmare? Well, there you go. Uh, what do they call that? Lucid dreaming. Yeah, there yeah. it is. And you have a responsibility for taking care of your own house. And that's what it's about, because I can't mind your house, but I certainly can try to do my own. And what I'm doing now is I have a pond. Water is my first concern. If the grid is to collapse, how am I going to get my water? You know, but, aside yeah. from it being glowing Well, you're going to have dark, to get a, a hand pump if you've got a well. I think you do have a well. Well, right. here, yeah, but my well's going dry. What do I do now? How deep is it? Well, there's that. It's 120 feet. Uh, you better, that you, creepy? I, I, yeah, it's that is yeah, creepy. I, I, would, I would get uh, now, a All Dallas the wells or, are on, a, on Midway here, uh -huh. where I live, just, you know, uh, uh, east of, uh, no, west of, of uh, Road Community College. I'm right on the freeway there. Uh, heading to the beaches, all the wells here are going dry. Oh, they are? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it gets better. So that's what my spare pair of pants is for. I fill it with sand. I run my water through it. Uh -huh. And then for every 1,000 feet I'm at, I boil it for 10 minutes. That means if I'm at 3,000 feet, I need to boil it for three minutes. I'm, uh, th 30 minutes, excuse me. And you, all of you, need to start thinking about water. You should have a minimum of five days put aside, three days minimum. Who's coming Everyone in five in days? Household. Who's coming in three days? Well, the grid. If it collapses, the municipalities are all going to fail. That's what FEMA is about. Yeah. Well, there it is. And they came through here doing the big one, you know, that earthquake off of Crescent City. And they're set up in Josephine County, and there's another one up in uh, Washington County. And they're primarily for delivery of water when the municipalities fail because the grid collapses. Now, that's the first shoe. Mm -hmm. Then there's your garden, and that's what I understand you're doing, where you have a greenhouse that's covered from particulate that might come down and make your food glow at night. Well, we try. This uh, system out in Weimar was only 258 feet, and yet it was a closed system with fish and lettuce. Uh -huh. And the lettuce, they were doing 50,000 head of lettuce That's every day, 24-7, yeah. yeah, just yeah. in that small system. Mm -hmm. And they were using a flat rather than a vertical system of aquaculture. They were using sodium lamps rather than LEDs. There are cheaper, better, faster, better ways of doing things. Everybody should start this year doing a flower garden or some kind of little victory thing with tomatoes and onions. should be doing that. You should be trying. Your goal is to produce 40% of 
of what you eat. If you can do that, you have a higher likely of survival. Water is first, and that's essential. And, well, and, tell, and tell that, wait a minute. On the first wait a minute. day wait a minute. three days of water supply, you should have a replacement plan the first day. Okay, now, let's take this argument to Jerry Brown. <laughs> they are clamping down on people. Brown now wants a $10,000 fine, $10,000 for anybody overusing water, whatever that means. And they're putting smart meters, of course, on water systems to homes, like they did on the electric grid, like they did on the gas system. And they're monitoring these things. And it, what if one of them screws up? Gosh, what if your neighbor doesn't like you and what turns your garden hose on? What they're doing now is they're charging you more money or more water. That means that if you use 100 gallons a, a week, it costs you uh, 5 cents a gallon. If you use uh, 200 gallons a week, it's going to cost you 9 cents a gallon. Right. And the price goes up with the consumption. That's the plan now. And unfortunately, watch out for privatization of water, because that will be next. Just like they're going to try to do your air that you breathe. It's crazy. And the whole thing is on based around monetary systems that are theatrical props. They're not real. Which means monetary systems are going to fail in September. There's going to be a bunch of banks that fail. CDs, IROs, all of that are going to be lost. Watch what happens next in the chaos that ensues. And when the sun is heating up, all by itself, and we're getting these X-band discharges, the grid is going to collapse. It won't be down very long, but it'll be down long enough to remind you just how weak and, and insecure you really are in the whole scheme of things. Nobody has their shit together, and that's the problem. Right now, everybody needs to start thinking about basics. <clears throat> Most people don't even understand what the basics are. They I don't. think that those that are listening to you do. Oh, these folks do. This is the yeah, best audience I mean, in talk radio. I think you pretty well got them squared away in that sense uh, of it. Yeah, these people do. But the, look, you look at the. Remember, I said this last night. I think the masses are asses, and uh, unfortunately, it's true. Not all of them, but most of them, and that's well, how the game is I don't know what you expect played. when you have two generations. How can you hold them? I, wait, Rick, I can't hold them. No you're right. I cannot hold them accountable. They haven't a chance, given it's the government schools. They've already dumbed them down control. with Absolutely. the educational system. I've made that know? point dozens of times. It's very difficult to hold them ultimately accountable. They don't have the tools. They just don't. So what are they? They're victims. They truly are victims. And they're going to pay the price because they are expendable, because those in control don't care. They couldn't care less, because they're not human. They think they've got their little bunkers and rabbit holes all stitched away and ready to go, and, well, good luck to them. I couldn't care less. I'll tell you what I do know, that if we do have a day after tomorrow, when we do come out of the cave, there'll be at least two years of snowpack, and nothing on that soil. It will be like the sands of Mars. There won't be any mycorrhizae, there won't be any seed. That means that if you're gonna bug in, you're going to have to bug in with what you come out of the cave with to survive. It's true. Uh, you're 100% right. I'm uh, concerned uh, for a lot of reasons. I, I don't, I just, again, don't have a sheet of paper with a bunch of stuff written down that I can say, here, you need to do this and this. We've been through that. We've talked about it. If you don't have a HEPA filter by now, if you don't understand that you've got to cover your garden so it doesn't rain on it, and it does still rain up in the northwest a bit. And if you don't understand where the radiation's coming from, and that, remember the yachtsman who sailed from Osaka to San Francisco three years ago? Yes, and he I said do. he made the trip many times before. He was an Aussie. And he, he held a news conference afterward, and he said, I'm brokenhearted. He said, the ocean is gone. He said, It's I, different I, now, yes, that's yeah. correct. It's he said, different. I've always been, I make this trip because I'm just overwhelmed with joy when I see the amount of life. He saw in the whole 4,000 plus nautical miles, two fish, one bird, and one whale with a tumor on its head. He's, that's all he saw. That's it. 
Now that was two years ago. And so where are we now? We have massive die-offs. But there now one of these phonies we're talking about. There are that are promising for certain forms of bioremediation. Do we have, do we have the time? The clock is running. Fukushima is running 24-7. So I don't, I don't know Fukushima if you have Fukushima is a time. real serious problem because the people that are managing it have no game plan right now. They, they have, have, they never have. No way to, well, they have no direction. Oh, they're frozen the ice wall. Come on. Exist. It's absurd. Frozen ice wall. They're popsicle. Uh, it, it just, it's a joke. It's sad, ugly joke. And this design, whoever designed that uh, Mark IV, Mark I, whatever it is, uh, plant, uh, they, he or she or they uh, live in hell uh, in infamy. They, they just created something beyond belief. And if any of those spent fuel pools fall, and eventually they will, we're going to have a, a funeral pyre that will emit this stuff into the air around the clock. It's not going it's to It's surprising stop. that the actual landmass of Japan is still intact. That's the known earthquake capital of the known universe. So It's on a precipice. There's nothing below it. It is amazing with the 7.4, 7.8 that yeah. were in that region just the last couple of days. It's um, surprising that we're not hearing more about that part of what's going on with Japan. Amen. Listen, my friend, good to talk to you, neighbor. You be yeah. well. And uh, we'll get together one day and trade notes on, you know, about this in more detail. Yeah, Thank does you. Does Laura Eisenhower live out in Ashland now where you do? I don't, honestly don't know who, who lives here or where, but there are a lot of people living in this area now because it is relatively safe. It's inland, far enough from the ocean. Yeah. There are no nuclear targets or military installations. We're bedrock. Yeah, we're, we're there. All right. Rick, take care. Talk Thank soon. You, Matt. Thank Thanks you. for being here. Yeah, Good yeah. night. Okay, that's hour number one with uh, Dr. Rick, and we'll come right back with more for you and Preston James coming up next.